Hi there, I'm Julian Drucker. You're watching Five News. Our top story tonight, a damning report into police forces has found potentially hundreds of officers who should have failed vetting checks may still be in the job. But also found not enough being done to tackle a predatory, misogynistic culture. Well, to talk more about that, we're joined now by former Detective Superintendent Shabnam Chowdhury and Director of uh, the Centre for Women's Justice, Harriet Wistrich. It makes it such grim reading, first of all, doesn't it, Shabnam? I mean, you worked in the Met for 30 years until 2019. Are you surprised by what you've heard in this today? Not surprised. Um, shocking, uh, but purely on the basis that uh, it's shocking to actually read what has been going on for decades within policing. Uh, not... No surprise at all, really. Sad to say. Mm. Harriet, I mean, you've had lots of women contact you since we've sort of been doing these stories over the last two years or so. Some of these women in the police, some of them who've had relationships with police officers, what sorts of things have, have you been hearing, Harriet? Yes, well, um, we um, put together something called a police super complaint a couple of years ago, which was looking at specifically at police perpetrated domestic abuse. Uh, it started just with a, a 19 case studies. By the time we publicised it, it went up to 46. And by the time, by, uh, by now, we're up to about 170 women who've contacted us. We, we haven't reached out to them, but just women have been desperate to speak to somebody about the problems they've experienced with uh, police uh, officers. Uh, these are women both uh, who are civilians in relationships with police officers and uh, police um, police officers themselves, women in the police force or in the police staff, who have uh, experienced um, sexual harassment, sexual assault, domestic abuse, and and certainly those working within the police have observed really worrying and disturbing levels of misogyny that make us, um, unfortunately, like um, your other guest, uh, not surprised at all by this report, though the report is helpful in shining a light around specifically the issues of recruitment and vetting procedures and how, uh, sadly, so many officers have, have, have been allowed into the police and um, unable to continue offending. And, Harriet, lots of those officers are still there, I presume. Well, yes, I mean, uh, we, we are still hearing accounts now. Uh, and and um, one of the problems that we're hearing is that um, the, 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 the investigations into allegations um, are often very poor, uh, that those that report are um, often unsupported, uh, sometimes victimised uh, and sometimes even subject of investigations themselves. So a, there, there has been certainly a, a, a real issue about reporting and whistleblowing. I know that um, with with the, the recent uh, developments and the exposures we've seen that there have been um, efforts uh, within certain police forces uh, to really try and transform that. But whether or not that's, um, you know, taking effect, uh, we, we, we wait to see. Uh, but certainly we're still hearing accounts now. So I, I, I'm i afraid, um, there's, <laughs> you know, you know there's, this is definitely a current problem. They call it uh, canteen culture, don't they, Shabnam? I don't know what sorts of things you used to see. And, and did vetting sort of ever come up in those years in the Met? Well, it's really interesting because vetting didn't really come up into uh, any of those types of conversations. Me, as a senior officer, was never aware or made aware that those officers that worked within my command were uh, criminals, uh, had convictions, um, or there may have been intelligence on them in terms of whether they were uh, involved in other criminal networks or, you know, families and that sort of thing. Every officer has a duty to declare an association, uh, but that's completely different to those officers that sit within policing that are convicted criminals and are serving as police officers for domestic abuse, indecent exposures, um, robbery of vulnerable victims, um, shocking revelations, really, as to how some of those officers get into police. And don't get me wrong, that there will be people, police officers, who are very, very young as juveniles who may have had convictions for things like trying to steal from a motor vehicle when they were 15 or 16. But these cases are not treated on their merits any longer. They are basically ignored and they are... Uh, 
pass through the vetting processes, come into policing, and then you end up with what you've ended up with in terms of uh, the murder of Sarah Everard. And let's not forget, that is a reason that this review was commissioned, because of the murder of a young woman at the hands of a vile police officer. Just listen to some of these messages we've had on our five phone uh, this evening. Sally says, um, I have no faith in the police. I was a victim of a crime and encouraged by the police to report it. When they investigated it, they believed the lies of the perpetrator and I was accused of the actions I had not committed. Um, someone called Mrs Ali said, a, a very good friend's husband is a police officer and from knowing him, he is honest, professional and down to earth. Not all police officers... Uh, should be tarnished Shabnam, but that is the problem, isn't it? I mean, there are more bad apples than perhaps we knew about, but it is now corroding the whole idea of policing, isn't it? Well, it's tarnishing policing. There are more bad apples than there are good officers. That is for, uh, for sure. However, those good officers that work within policing, that work with integrity, without fear or without favour, and that are professional, are the same officers who sit there and when there are officers who have red flag behaviours and uh, those good officers are indifferent to the behaviours that are being displayed by many of these officers. That Operation Hotton, for example, the WhatsApp groups, let's not pretend that those kind of groups just played out within those groups. Those officers would have displayed those behaviours within policing amongst their officers that were ignored. It's now time for police officers to unite, present a united front and actually root out the rotten apples, because it's more than just a barrel. Just briefly, Harriet Wistrich, I mean, what do you want to see implemented after this today? Um, well, I think there has to be a zero tolerance culture of misogyny. It means that uh, we, we have to vet police officers and uh, have better recruitment. We need to encourage uh, and make secure whistleblowing by people within the police, as Shab um, has, has highlighted um, in, in her account. You know, that the officers are, are seeing things happening and are, are not whistleblowing and not reporting it. And, and that's often because they themselves are being victimised when they when they speak out. That has to change. Um, and, and uh, you know, there needs to be an independent reporting mechanism, a, a way in which uh, these, these investigations are, are properly looked at. Um, I think we also need, just need to remember that it's not just, uh, you know, if we know how few, few um, perpetrators of, of sexual and violent crimes are, Convicted. It's not just those. You know, these are these are some of the people who have criminal mm. convictions. But of course, there are others who 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 have never been convicted who will be in the police. Sure. So there needs to be a way in which we can really root out this behaviour uh, before before you know crimes are committed and before okay. uh, further abuse is committed. Okay, Harriet Wistrich and uh, Shabnan Chowdhury. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Thank you.